Welcome everybody to tonight's meeting of the Jones Library Board of uh, Jones Library, the Jones Library Building Committee. So again, I just want to make sure that we can all hear each other. Sharon, Sherry. Here. George. Here. Alex. Here. Vera. Here. Pam. Here. Christine. Here. Melissa. I didn't hear you, Melissa. You want to try again? Here. There we go. Thanks. There we go. So we have a um, we have a quorum. Thanks. Thank you all for coming. We have minutes in the packet. So let's go through online here. I got to get the minutes in the packet. Let's go through the minutes in the packet. Give me just one second to get them up on my screen. So we have minutes from May 28th. Uh, is there a motion to approve those minutes? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Second. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Thank you. Corrections to the minutes. Okay, voting to approve the minutes. Sharon? Yes. George? Yes. Alex? Yes. Laura? Yes. Pam? Pam? Yes. Thank you. Christine? Yes. Melissa? I'm going to abstain. I wasn't here for that. Okay. And Austin votes yes. Thank you. Okay. Next is the minutes of June 4th, I believe. June 4th. I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Corrections to the minutes? Yes. There are corrections. I was not present, so my I should not be listed as present. And also, I think the vote should reflect that it's uh, any votes that were taken would be eight zero with one absent. Thank you, Pam. Okay, other corrections. All right, voting on the minutes of June 4th. Sharon? Yes. George? Yes. Alex? Yes. Vera? Yes. Pam? I'll abstain because I wasn't there. Christine? Yes. Melissa? I'll abstain because I wasn't there. Austin votes yes. Okay. July 9th. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Corrections to those minutes. Okay. Voting to approve the minutes of July 9th. Sharon? Yes. George? Yes. Alex? Yes. Thank you, Farah. Yes. Pam? Yes. Thank you. Christine? Yes. Melissa? Abstain. And Austin votes yes. There's one more set of minutes I think came in the next packet, and that is of the minutes of July 17th. We'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Corrections to those minutes. Uh, an amendment. I was not present at the meeting. Thank you, Alex. Okay, ready to ready to vote on the minutes of July seventeenth. Sharon. Yes. George. Yes. Alex. Dane. Farah. Yes. Pam. Yes. Christine. Yes. Melissa. Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank you for that. So the next item on the agenda is a report from the town manager, but the town manager doesn't seem to be present. So I think we'll skip the report from the town uh, town manager. Okay. Melissa, we have some business to do. Yeah. I have some, some invoices. Did right. you want me to? I didn't know I was presenting those. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> So we have um, a few invoices here. Um, we just, I we have um, an older invoice from um, Colliers from May of 2024 um, in the amount of seven thousand four hundred and sixty-five dollars. 
Um, we also have a um, another um, slightly older bill for um, from May for um, the bid documents of um, one thousand seventeen dollars, <throat> and then the 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 biggest bill we have here um, is a bill from um, Feingold for the um, the post bid redesign work for their period of. Is it, um, I wanna make sure, yeah, their, their period of July, um, 2024 in the amount of um, $147,224.38 for their post-design work. Okay, do you wanna, um, you have those invoices that we could see them? We'll look at them one at a time. Uh, yeah, Sharon did send them to me, so. Let's do them one at a time. Report. Well, I, I have them downloaded to my projects folder and not. Sharon, do you have them in a way that they could be displayed? No. Oh. I I have them. I just needed. I just go to. I just go into another place. Um, Please just to be approved. So just do more. This is the, can you, can you see that now? I yeah. can see the Collier's uh, invoice for, it looks like it's for 7,465. Four. Mm -hmm. Can, can you make it a little um, bigger, 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 bigger. Okay. There you go. Perfect. 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 Okay, so is there a motion to approve this invoice? Christine. I'll make a motion, but I just had a question. Is this if you could if you last... could hold line? Let's just make the motion and second it and then oh, back to you. Okay. Is that okay. I'll make a motion to approve the right. invoice. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Christine. Um, I was just wondering, is this the last bill we get from Collier's or is there another? It's been a while, so I can't remember. Yep. Sharon? Yes, I agree. This this should be the last one from their work in the spring. Pam? Yeah, thank you. Um, my concern is the same as it was the last time that we got a, a bill for Collier's um, for construction services because we haven't gotten into the construction phase yet. I was told then that um, it had been agreed with the town manager or something like that, that they would begin to dip into their construction fund because the bid period was going longer, but I've never seen any documentation um, stating that. And so I probably will have to say, no, I do not want to approve this invoice because um, I don't see the, um, I don't see the paperwork supporting it. Melissa, can you help with that? I mean, honestly, I only know what um, Bob said last meeting about um, an agreement that they had expended all of the design and bidding phase money and that they had moved into construction phase in their um, project allocation amount. Um, I don't, I assume that this is the last bill because, um, but I, you know, I only got this a few weeks ago, so I don't, you know, they're not, they're coming, not coming directly to me. So um, are you getting them, Sharon? Like, I don't, I don't know what the. You, you and I get them, you, I, and yeah. Bob, yeah. but I, this is the last for the work that they've completed for us. Yeah. And I and I think Bob Parent did show us all the documentation showing that it's. Um, I don't think he did. It, yeah, we 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 saw it. So. 
Okay, any other questions about this invoice? Okay, voting to approve the invoice. Sharon? Yes. Farah? Yes. Pam? No. Christine? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Uh, I've got to change my screen. George? Yes. Alex? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Okay, show us the next invoice, please. Oh, I just want to make sure I grab the right. There we go. This is the Bid one to... for $1,017. <clears throat> yeah. And this is um, for advertising of the, the bid documents. Okay. Can you just bring it down so we can see the total there as well? Oh, sorry. No, that's great. That's great. Okay. That's great. Thank you so much. Okay. Is there a motion to approve this invoice? Christine. I'll make a motion to approve this invoice. Great. Second. Is second, second, Rooney. Great. Is there a discussion of this invoice? Okay. On the. Oh, I actually do have a question, but I'm not sure if Bob's not here. He he's not here to answer it, and that is that it looked like we only ordered one full size set of the whole document package. And are they expecting to do the same for the um, the upcoming bid as well? That they'll just have one full set. Will there be any half size sets that will be available for um, people to stop by and look at? Sharon, do you know the answer to that question? Thank no, you. No, you'll have to wait till Bob gets back. Okay. Okay, back on the invoice. Any other discussion of the invoice? All right, on the invoice, Sharon. Yes. George. Yes. Pam? Yes. Christine? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Uh, Far? Yes. Alex? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Next invoice is from FAA. <clears throat> this invoice is for $147,224.38, and this is for... Um, work done in the period of July 1st to July 31st in the so-called value engineering uh, process. Uh, Christine. I will make a motion to approve this bill. Thank you so and much. I need a second. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Pam. Uh, actually, the, if you want to state the amount correctly, it's 147000 Two twenty four thirty eight. It's the bottom line includes all the consultants. Right. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions about the invoice? All right. Voting to approve. Oh, Christine, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just had one question. Uh, just I guess to Sharon or someone. It, what did this come in? Kind of like what we expected, or. Oh, uh, I I don't know. That would be a Bob question. Okay, and there's a. Have we gotten the August bill yet? Yes, it it just came in. Uh, it didn't come in time for this meeting, right, so right. Um, it'll be for next meeting. Okay, and you don't know how much that one is. Uh, I, I I do know. Um, if you do, you want me to share? Um, it's um. One hundred sixty-one thousand one hundred forty-eight dollars, even. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. And let's remember, this is a library expense. Correct. Okay. Any other questions about this invoice? Sharon, voting on the question of approving the invoice. Yes. Thank you, Sarah. Yes. Great, Pam. Yes, unmuted. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Christine. Yes. Melissa. Yes. Uh, George. Yes. Alex. Yes. And Austin votes yes. And there seems to be one more, an, another invoice from Bid Docs for $400. Yeah. Melissa, do you have that one too? You know, I do. I think it was in the packet. I'm just looking through. It's on the last page in the packet. 
Yeah, I didn't. Um, I couldn't find your packet, so I just that I was pulling up the ones that I had already um, put over to start processing. So let me um, see if I can find your packet. It so is there. it is for bid docs online. It's dated September third. To yep. Bob Parent, Bob has approved payment of this invoice. Uh, project posting, uh, electronic hosting, and e-bidding pre-qualification services for forty five hundred dollars. Uh, That's it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anybody have any questions about this invoice? Is there a motion to approve the invoice payment of the invoice? I will make a motion for the bid doc 4,500. Thank you so much, Christine. Is there a second? Second. Thank you for Okay, now voting to approve, uh, any, dis any other discussion of this invoice? Okay, voting to approve this invoice, Christine. Yes. Thank you, Melissa. Yes. Alex. Yes. George. Yes. Pam. Yes. All right. Going back here. Sharon. Yes. Dara. Yes. And Austin votes yes. Okay. Melissa, if you take down your screen share, thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. So it's been a busy summer for the the redesign project. I mean redesign process. So you know that FAA, you've seen from the invoices. The FAA went through uh, with the redesign process. Uh, the redesign process added nothing to anything that we have approved. Nothing was added to what the board, what the committee had previously seen. There were two changes made. That is the removal of the bid alternative on the asphalt sink shingle roof and the removal of the bid alternative on the windows. Uh, those uh, things were required by the historical commission. So uh, what we saw before will go out to bid uh, with the exception that won't be bid all those two bid alternatives. Um, the, the design, the proposal was reviewed by the design review committee. It was reviewed by the shade tree committee. It was reviewed by the planning board and it was reviewed in two extensive hearings with the um, Amherst Historic uh, Commission. We've gone through a pre-qualification process. We have five pre-qualified general contractors. Um, we are in the process now of thinking about our temporary space. Sharon, the RFP for the temporary space, what is its status? It, it did come back and there were no responses. So what is our... What is our posture in relationship? Do we got no responses? Um, I uh, so somebody has reached out since then and um, and said that they have uh, space available that they would like uh, Bob and I to come and look at. And so uh, regarding process after that, it's a Bob parent question. Right. The question is, if they didn't submit a proposal. And that was because this space that this person is thinking about did not meet the requirements of the previous RFP. Yeah, my question is just in terms of town processes. Uh, what does it mean that they, were, they didn't respond to the RFP in terms of your ability to actually engage with them? It, it depends, and we'll have to wait for Bob to come back from vacation to talk about it. Okay. Uh, let me just see. So, um, one uh, Pam, just one more sentence, if 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 you, if I may. Um, we have uh, been in conversation with Bob Parent, and Bob, as you know, is acting as our OPM uh, about reaching out to the five pre-qualified general contractors, uh, to be in touch with them, to be encouraging to them, uh, um, to hope, hopefully uh, help them see their way clear to submitting, uh, to submitting bids. 
Okay, Pam. Yeah, two two quick things. Um, when you read off your list of the VE elements that that were dropped, uh, there was also mill work that originally had been part of the uh, under the axe, and then that got retracted. So that was not. Um, I don't know that you did a bid alternate, but that just came off the board. Um, so they are not. Anyway. Um, Can I just the, interrupt you? Because I'm a little yeah. confused. I want to be clear. We had originally proposed to take out the historic mill work. You, among others, said you wanted it in. So we put it back in. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, so just you were you were reading off a list of of VE changes, like from the original list. What 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 have you actually gone forward with this round? What I was saying and, was that um, there was nothing added that the committee had not previously seen and requested. The only changes that were made since the I, last okay. JLBC meeting <clears throat> were the removal of two bid alternatives. And they were made, those changes were made because they were required by the historic commission. So I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. That's what I was trying to be okay. clear about. Okay. And then and then on that note, um, I actually didn't remember sitting in a meeting um, confirming that those items were um were agreed upon by the by the building committee. I, I think it was. Um, the I don't think we've met since historical commission actually made those recommendations. Well, I'm, I'm happy to have us vote to approve what we are being required to do. <laughs> I mean, you've you've already moved but on my, past that. My, my you've obviously was, moved on past that point, but yeah. My view was since we were not adding anything, everything that we had we were doing the committee had seen and reviewed, we were simply complying with the requirements of the historic commission. So I didn't believe that there was any need for action by the JLBC. If you believe that there is a need for action by the JLBC, you can make a, a, a motion, we can discuss it. Sounds like it's already moved forward. So I'm not going to take the time to make a motion. Okay, thank you. But that would have been good. Uh, any other questions or comments about the things that I've just referenced? By the way, I do want to say the following. Um, FAA has demonstrated yet again a kind of level of um, dedication, flexibility, uh, I love governance in Amherst. I think we have a great town set of town processes, but they are time consuming. Uh, they took a lot of time. FAA was there patiently presenting uh, what needed to be presented. And I think we were yet again well served by uh, having FAA as our architects as we went through that process. Okay, if there are no other questions about that, Sharon, item number six, required reviews. So in, in your packet is some information about uh, the 106 uh, review timeline. It's a draft. Um, and and again, we're, we're waiting and, uh, until the end of this week to hear to hear back from MHC uh, and uh, next week, starting next week, we'll start identification of historic properties. Um, we are in the process of planning uh, a meeting with the consulting parties, and it'll be a public meeting posted underneath uh, the JLBC umbrella. Um, and there will be uh, time for more public comment. But this is, again, this is just a draft, but uh, so many people have, have asked questions about a timeline, so we didn't want to we did. We didn't want to wait. We just wanted to share this with you. But it's it's it can it can all change tomorrow. Uh, um, so that's really all I wanted to say about one hundred and six. And before you ask questions uh, regarding the archaeological review, the library is hiring is going to be um, 
it, uh, contracting directly with public archaeology archeolo laboratory. Um, so that process will begin soon. Um, and then the HUD environmental review, that's a, a part of, uh, uh, you know, the PNF process through the state and, and Bob Parent uh, will be able to, to do that piece of the survey. Um, that's really, that's really all I have right now, uh, but I'm happy to try and answer questions. Right. So any, yeah, Pam. Thank you. Um, I'm, what what do we expect to get back from from MHC? You you said you're waiting on a letter this week. What are we what are we hoping to hear from them? Oh, as to whether or not they'd like to be a consulting partner. Oh, okay, got it. And then, um, so it looks like. And thank you for this. Thank you for this uh, list. I think the timeline is very very helpful. It's been it's been pretty amorphous. Um, the finding of effect. So between yourself. Uh, and Bob Perrin, it looks like the two of you are, who, who's actually going to write the finding of effect? That, uh, that will be done as part of the process. And I would think the actual who's going to write the letter is probably PAL. So I thought they were just doing archaeological survey, not, not. No, uh, so. We've also so they're doing two pieces of the puzzle. They're doing the the section one hundred and six process as well as oh, the they are oh, okay. Yep. Hey, so they'll do, they'll do groundwork, ground whatever test pits, and and the one hundred and six yeah. process. Okay. Anything so, else, so, Pam? Sorry, yeah, Christine, and then I'll come back. Okay, thank you, Pam. Christine. Yeah, I just, um, Sharon, you created this, right? No. Or or whoever did it, you said that it could change at any time. I yeah. just guess somewhere in the footer, like dating this, so we know which revision, if other ones come out. Yeah, yeah. and this isn't, this wasn't even ready for distribution. Yeah, it was yeah. just so. No, it's just so I don't get confused later for another one. And then I don't know which one was first or so people don't get confused. Anyways, low hanging fruit, but thank you. Yeah. Mm. All right, Pam, you were going to come back and then far. Pam. Okay, thank you. Um, so, in terms of the timing of this, I know. Um, or I, I guess I've seen or read somewhere, I'm going to try to get the bids out. Our bids are going to be due on the 25th. So I'm just trying to imagine if the findings have elements that could be adjusted in the plans, we will have a, we'll have a bid document set that is complete. Um, and we start to we start to open bids. They are bidding on Project X. How how do you how do we expect to incorporate any of the mitigation measures or other elements that might be necessary in order to comply with the NEH and the HUD uh, requirements that make sure we get our money. The money and, they might give us, sorry, not our money, their money. Yeah, so that'll all be discussed um, through the consulting parties discussion. It's not something I can speak to right now. So we don't know if, if so for instance, if if the bids are in and some change is made, I'm, I'm just going to voice my own concern from construction experience that if there's something that you want to change after the fact, you are often faced with change orders that are really hard to control price-wise. Um, that that worries me. So I would just love somebody to address that pretty in pretty close detail. Yep. So we will, possible. we will address it. You have identified, and I appreciate it, the, exactly the mechanism for responding. We're not going to redraw the construction documents. So I think you you've identified the the mechanism that may have to be used, which is change orders. And you've, I think, rightly identified, you know, it's difficult to manage the change orders, but there is a mechanism. The mechanism is well known. And as you just pointed out, right, it's not 
It's not infrequently used. All right, Farah, and then Christine. Farah. Um, I I don't, I can't remember if I asked this before, but Sharon, I was just uh, who is going to be part of this process in town? You and Bob, and who else? Uh, again, more specifics next week. Week, but okay. each consulting party will be given to, you know, slots to representatives, and so. Uh, stay tuned. It's okay. uh, they people folks have until Saturday uh, to okay. to say that they want to be a consulting party. So we're still we're still in it. But is there like someone from town hall? Uh, stay tuned. That's okay. all I got for you. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I think we want to be as clear as we can be, right, Sharon? So people will. Consulting parties will have to say they want to be part of the process. Is that correct? Yes. At that time, do they have to designate their representatives or can that come later? Uh, I think it could come later. Okay. So does that make sense, Farah? In other words, we we may not know for a while. Okay. Yep. Christine. Yeah, I just want to, you know, stress that that, as people were saying, it, it's a normal thing to have addendums and, and change orders that yep. doesn't always mean that they're pricey. And when construction starts, it's normal all the time for th discoveries to be made. And the system is quite robust in handling that. So I, I'm not concerned at that point about things changing. Okay. Any other questions about what Sharon has presented? Okay, that's great. Thank you, Sharon. Thanks for all your work on that. I know of no correspondence. I know of no topics that haven't been anticipated. So the next item is an opportunity for public comment. We have 22 attendees, and I'm really grateful for your attendance. I would ask you, please, if you want to make a public comment, to please raise your hand now. Okay, we have five people that would like to make public comments. I would be grateful if um, each of you would limit your comments to uh, two minutes. And the first person I see is uh, Rob Kushner. Rob, please unmute yourself. Thank you. Yeah, good evening. The speed of light is limited, and therefore it took a moment to uh, sure. actually do. Um, just actually, uh, the chair made a comment uh, that I thought was very uh, salient, and and I hope not uh, foreboding, but the prospect that some of the things that are planned for the future are getting either no responses to RFPs or a limited number of bidders should be of some concern to all of us. Um, I, you know, I, I realize that uh, I probably have a different view than many of you who have been supporting this project all along. I've been a longtime supporter of not only the Jones itself, but the whole Jones Library system. And I, I really regret that it's gotten this far and that some of us who love the library are so far apart on how to proceed. But I am curious, and obviously you're not going to answer the question, but I, so I ask it rhetorically, if the number of qualified contractors, pre-qualified contractors is extremely limited, and if the number of people responding to a, a temporary location has gone to zero, um, I'm just wondering how you're planning on moving forward. It, it's, it's an alarming situation. And I'm sorry that it's gotten to that point, but uh, just, you know, I'm just repeating in some sense what your, your president and I don't know the chair of this committee was raising earlier. And I, I hope you'll use it not only to think about how to get around that thing, but perhaps to reflect on where we've gotten. 
Okay. So thank you. I'm sorry to go on so long, but th there you go. Thanks. Thanks for your comment, Rob. Okay. Um, next, I see Jeff Lee. Thanks. This is Jeff Lee from South Amherst. Um, maybe I am misunderstanding, but when you say that um, uh, nothing has been added uh, in the FAA value engineering designs, I, I recall from a previous JLBC meeting that uh, FAA explained that the mill work plan is as you said, it's uh, no longer being removed and the asbestos abated and then put back, but there is a change. The uh, millwork will now be cut into to allow wiring and fire, fire sprinklers and other systems to be inserted where necessary. I think that's very important to make the public and the Mass Historical Commission aware of. The millwork is a critical component of the historic fabric of the library, and you should be acknowledging that. Maybe you want to correct me if I'm wrong in my understanding, but that's what I recall. Um, also, I think Pam Rooney asks a very uh, critical question. Um, what's going to happen if the review requires uh, mitigation or avoidance of uh, adverse effects? And so that could re range to something as significant as um, eliminating or downsizing the addition that the Mass Historic Commission has identified as being out of scale uh, with the historic building and uh, obstructing its view. So that seems to be beyond the scope of a change order. And it, I'm concerned about that. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. OK. Uh, next is Maria Kopicki. Maria? Thank you, Maria Kopicki, South Amherst. So I find it concerning, um, but not surprising at this point, that this committee, who is charged with being in charge of this project, has not asked to see an update of the value engineering money, what with everything that's been taken out, what is that down to? By my accounting, it's been cut in half to about $1.5 million. The documents that you're talking about going out to bid next week it have not been presented in this con to you for your review to see what exactly is it that they're planning to do, for example, with that mill work. It's also, uh, I think you want to check your information about how many general contractors have been pre-approved. Five applied, but I don't know that all five have been approved. And I think you need to be a little bit more forthcoming about that. I'm gonna bring up again, the fact that nobody has addressed why the public was not made aware about withholding of information about rejection of historic tax credits. There is more information coming through on this, thanks to some record requests, and it does seem that there are other people were made aware of this, but they also did not share that information. So I think you need to be getting to the bottom of this and start sharing that publicly. I also don't understand how you are having this meeting to have a report from the town manager who's not present and to have uh, the now new OPM be absent from this meeting because there were a whole lot of questions and a whole lot that should have been discussed publicly. And all we got is, I don't know, going to have to wait for Bob. Um, that is no way to run a multi-million dollar project, municipal project. So again, disappointed, but not surprised. Thank you.
Austin, you're muted. That's probably a benefit to everybody. Okay. So three more people, and then we'll be done with public comment, I believe. Arlie, you're next. Hi, this is Arlie Gould from South Amherst. Um, I share the concerns about the bidding process and the review process going concurrently. It does seem a little more problematic than just, oh, we can change it and things are very flexible. But I'm happy to hear some people with more experience saying that maybe that is the case. But seems concerning to me. But one thing I actually want to talk about is something more general, and it just has to do with comments that I keep hearing. When I first began in this process, I kept hearing this comment over and over, and I heard it again recently um, in public comment. Uh, there's overwhelming support for this project in the town. And when they're talking about this, they're pointing to the vote in 2021. And it's just, I don't think this is true for three reasons. One, 4,000 people voted in that uh, referendum. And this is a town of like 25,000. And if you add the students, it's almost double. So that is not a vast majority. Um, the vote did come two thirds to one third in favor of the 35 million borrowing. But again, that's not a huge, overwhelming, you know, majority. 85 to 90 percent would have been a huge majority. This project, well, what was voted on in 21 was 35 million. Now it's 46 million. What was voted on was the pamphlets and the, you know, all the flyers about the project. And now it's gone through two rounds of VE. So that's changed. So this project is not what was voted on. So in essence, nobody has voted on this project. Um, and the truthful statement would be that about 2,666 people in 2021 voted to let the town borrow 35 plus million dollars. Um, Arlie, uh, you're, you're over time, you please finish up. All right. So I would just say this leaves us with a, the truth is, is we don't really know at all what the majority of this town supports is in favor of or not. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Arlie. Thanks for your comment. Okay. Two more. Uh, next is Sarah. Am I unmuted yet? You are, Sarah. It's nice to hear from you. Thank you, Austin. Um, I should, Sarah McKee, South Carolina, uh, but still care about the library. Um, I'm very concerned by going out to bid when we know that there will be changes to the plans. It does not seem fair to the contractors. And I would like to know what notification do you intend to give to potential contractors about potential changes, change orders to the plans, which, which might come into play before their bids are accepted. This it just seems very problematic from a process point of view. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Again, nice to hear from you. Okay, the next and last person, I believe, is Mickey Rathburn. Mickey? Uh, this is Mickey Rathburn. I live at 666 Southeast Street in Amherst. Um, yeah, I'm always amazed at these public comment uh, opportunities that specific questions are raised and then not answered, uh, not even addressed <clears throat> with a sort of promise to get an answer. Um, but I 
my concern among others is that the uh, timeline as it stands now does not allow for the invitation or uh, input from consulting parties uh, to put their input into the determination of adverse effects. Um, as it stands, uh, there is no provision for consulting parties to participate in the drawing up of the determination of adverse effects. Um, as it stands, uh, the timeline appears to allow only for consulting parties to comment after the fact, after the adverse uh, effects have already been determined. That process, that sequence of events is in clear violation of uh, 36 CFR 800, which is the um, uh, section 106 uh, body of regulations. Um, those regulations require that uh, consulting parties uh, are allowed to give input before the determination of adverse effects is made um, and that consulting parties more generally are to be involved <clears throat> in all decision-making uh, processes uh, as the as the project goes forward. Um, Mickey, you are over time. If you would wrap up, I'd be grateful. Um, yeah, I I would just like to hear somebody uh, say something in response to my uh, my concern. Um, if it's not clear, I would be happy to restate it. Um, Okay, I think we. Okay. I, think yeah. we under, I think we understand again. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, and, and do you have a do you have a response for me? Thank you so much for coming, Mickey. Uh that's really not what I'm talking about. Mickey, I'm you're happy, over. You're but over. I would really like to get some. I'm, I am really sorry. You are a little over time. I I I don't mean to be interrupting you, but we've heard your we've heard your question. We've heard your concern. Okay. I mean, this press, this meeting is supposed to run until 6.30. It's now quarter of six. So would even like though some of us have run over our two minutes, yeah, would you I like don't to, think would you like to there are so many people that you can't um, fully hear what we have to say. Do you have anything more you'd like to say, Mickey? Yes. I would like a response to the concern that I raised. Okay. Do you have anything else that you want to say? Okay, thank you, Mickey. Yeah, well, I would I would thank like to comment. say that as it now stands, this process for making a determination of adverse effects does not include input from consulting parties. And that, as I read section 106, is a clear violation of its requirements. Okay, I, again, with... with with gratitude for your interest, gratitude that you've come, gratitude for your comments. I'd really be grateful if you would now stop. Is that okay? Um, okay. I, so public, public comment is now closed. Okay. So I hope people will take a look at the 106 process as outlined uh, in the draft. It's very clear about what it provides and what it um, allows. Uh, it should not be mischaracterized. Uh, one other thing I want to say, uh, uh, my comments were characterized as being alarmed. Uh, I was not in any way alarmed by anything that I said. So I'm just wanting to be clear. Uh, I didn't say anything in a spirit of alarm. Okay, so I think we are, I think we are, we have, we have done our business.
And unless anybody, any other member of the committee wants to say anything. Yeah, Pam. Thank you. Um, and not specifically to the previous commenter, but that was a point that I had not noticed that, in fact, the adverse effect letter goes off. Um, uh, it looks like it gets sent on the 23rd, if I'm reading it correctly. But the consultation, in fact, then doesn't start until afterwards. And I that I didn't I didn't think that through. And that yep. that does seem problematic. Sharon, do you want to say anything about that? Only that it's a draft and people want answers before uh, we can provide them. So um, this is what we have for now. Stay tuned. Thanks. Any, anything else? Okay, gratitude for your attendance. Thank you very, very much. Thanks for the work that you have done and will continue to do. This meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Stay well. Mm -hmm.